last time we started talking about the quantization of the Dirac theory. And so if we start with the Lagrange identity of the Dirac theory, then we can isolate the time dependent uh, uh, the part which involving time derivative has the following form. And then we interpret this as the canonical momentum for um, for psi. Then we have pi psi, and then this one we just interpret as the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian density. Okay. And uh, and then we can just proceed to quantize the theory. We write down the canonical quantization condition, and then we expand psi in terms of complete sets of solutions, etc. And then we recognize if we do it in the standard way, say to impose the commutator relation, and then the Hamiltonian actually is unbounded from below. So actually, the the the, the total energy uh, can be as active as yeah, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, x. X active, uh, 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 yeah, it can be arbitrarily active, okay? And so that theory does not make sense. And also, if we use the standard way to quantize it, we would get a, a theory which when you exchange two particles, which they commute, uh, uh, which are symmetric. And uh, so, so that looks like a bos uh, bosonic theory rather than a fermionic theory. And then there's a simple fix. So the fix is that instead of imposing the standard quantization, uh, standard commutation relation, we impose uh, the following one. So we replace everywhere the commutator by anti-commutator. Okay. So, so what we do, say, for the commutation relation, we consider psi alpha p x and then pi beta p x prime. So the anti-commutator is equal to i delta alpha beta and the three. OK, we impose this condition. So which is the same if we plug in this pi pi just given by i psi dagger. And then that just give you psi alpha px and psi beta dagger px prime give you delta alpha beta delta three x minus x prime. Okay. So this equation, so one thing to notice, so the uh, the commutator, uh, 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 the commu uh, 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 the anti-commutator is uh, uh, um, symmetric between these two, okay? Because because the now is the plus rather than minus, okay? Uh, rather than minus, and so uh, uh, so load. So this commutation relation. It's self consistent, so if we call this equation one, so if one is self consistent, um, at x equal to x prime, okay, so if you take this two at the same point, sorry, so this should be prime, so if you uh, take this two at the same point, so, so the left hand side you have psi alpha and the psi beta, okay? So, so you just have psi psi dagger. Uh, so the left hand side is a positive definite quantity, okay? You have psi dagger, uh, and the right hand side is also a positive definite quantity, uh, and you have this uh, delta function evaluated at zero, 
Okay. Yeah. Even though it's uh, 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 even though it's uh, 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 divergent. Okay. And so, so both sides are positive definite. So the fact that this is self-consistent, if you trace it back, has to do with the psi, uh, this pi is actually equal to i psi beta, okay? So if it's equal to minus i psi, uh, uh, so if pi is equal to i psi dagger. So if it is equal to minus i psi dagger, and then of course you will have a contradiction. Okay, because the left uh, the left hand side will be positive, the right hand side will be negative uh, because you will change the sign, and that sign then trace back to this sign. So, uh, so that's the reason actually we want to have a, uh, uh, this sign here. Okay, so the sign here is for a reason. Okay, even though uh, classically when you write it down, it doesn't matter uh, uh, what the yeah uh, 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 it's it was not important what the sign is, but but quantum mechanically it's actually important. Okay. So, so this comes from. So, uh, so the, yeah, so the sign in L important. Okay. Good. Any questions on this? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to mention that. Yeah, I'm going to mention that. Yes. So in quantum mechanics, uh, like the fundamental computation relation tells you that x and t don't commute. But in the classical limit, h bar goes to zero, and they do. Yeah. And that's like a very physically intuitive right. idea. Right. 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 Here, h bar goes to zero. Uh, this is totally different with the asset computer. So like, how does? Yeah. How do we interpret the quantum computer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the classical limit. Uh, yeah, we will actually. Uh, uh, this is a very good question. We will discuss later. Then classical limit they become anti commute. Uh, uh, yeah, in the in the classical limit, essentially they become a, 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 a anti commute variables. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and this is uh, uh, crucial when we later describe path integral. Yeah. yeah, we will discuss this in detail later. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Oh, you, you, you can talk about the commutation relation between them. Uh, it, just you cannot impose them. But does it, does it do you get any physical meaning from the commutation relation between those two objects? Or is it yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a, it, 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 these are two operators. Right. You can always consider whatever uh, uh, quantities uh, but about them. Like a yeah, but 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 there's no general rule. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, 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 so the general rule we impose for the anti-commutator. Okay, and uh, so um, and then in the second step, we just I I expand. We just expand the uh, 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 the psi in terms of complete set of modes. Okay, and uh, so in the second step, as we do before, we expand the psi x. In terms of complete set of modes, so we have already worked out last time. The times, so we have a k s for the u s. Okay, then we have I, 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 expansion i k x. And then similarly with the uh, complex scalar convention, so now let me call this C. Just uh, uh, last time I used B, but uh, it's often conven uh, conventional to use C. And uh, I put the dagger here. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's not so important whether you put dagger here. So, but it's a convention. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is our complete set uh, uh, of solutions. And then we expand psi in terms of arbitrary coefficients uh, 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 in terms of them. 
And uh, since psi is generally complex, so these two don't have to be the same, okay? So these two, yeah, just like the complex scalar case, they don't have to be the same. And uh, so, so quantum mechanically, then, then A and C, they are operators, okay? A, 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 A and C, they are operators. So, so if I call this equation two, and then if we plug two into one, then we can get the commutators. We can get the anti-commutators between A and C, okay? And uh, so, so we find that the, um, for example, AK, R, AK prime, S dagger equal to C K R and C K prime S dagger now is equal to two pi cube delta three K minus K prime RIS. Okay? And with all other anti commutator, so uh, emphasize anti commutators zero. Okay? Uh, and uh, yeah, so so the story is similar as before, except you just everywhere replace the commutator by anti-commutator. And then the vacuum, we can still define the vacuum. We can still divide, uh, uh, later we will see that this is justified, okay? So we can still define the vacuum as annihilated by AK. And the CK for any K and S. Okay. Okay, so, so we define the vacuum. The reason this is the vacuum is because now if you fi find the Hamiltonian, so you can plug this in. Into your expression for the Hamiltonian, then uh, 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 for the Hamiltonian, because they just express in terms of psi, then you can just work it out. Okay, just uh, straightforward as we did pre previously for the scalar field. Just now the algebra is slightly more complicated because you have, uh, uh, um, yeah. So so now you get omega k, and then you have s. One two, and then you have a k s dagger a k s plus c k s dagger c k s, then plus some constant. Okay, just as the as in the scalar case, we always have some zero point energy. Okay, we always have some zero point energy. And uh, uh, um, so now you see if you define, uh, so now you see the Hamiltonian is positive definite. Okay, the Hamiltonian is positive definite. And uh, because we have a plus sign here rather than the minus sign if we do the commutation relation. Okay, and then uh, since this is positive definite, and then that justify defining this zero as the vacuum. Okay, because this state indeed has the lowest energy uh, given by this E0. Uh, and uh, yeah, E0 as uh, in the boson, uh, in the uh, previous scalar case will be divergent. Okay, will be divergent. Any questions on this? Yes? Oh, right, sorry, yeah, yeah, indeed. Good, thank you.
Good. So, so let me make some comments on this E0. So again, again the quantization, okay, yeah, uh, again the, uh, the quantized field, uh, as in the uh, scalar case, essentially consists of an infinite number of harmonic oscillators. So now I need to put those harmonic oscillators by, by, by codes, because now these harmonic oscillators, they define in terms of the anti-commutators rather than commutators, okay, rather than commutators. And uh, so, so very important feature, okay, and, uh, and normally we call them fermionic uh, for reasons will be clear very soon. Okay, so this is the first note. Uh, 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 for reasons will be very soon, and the, uh, 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 why we call them fermionic uh, uh, oscillator, okay. And so, so we have for each k, and the value of the s, okay, and you have a, a, a oscillator. Okay, and then you have oscillator generated by A, and also have oscillator generated by C. Okay. So um, each fermionic oscillator so this is like the harmonic oscillator, they contribute to E0, to this ground state energy. So remember previously, for the, both, for the scalar case, each oscillator contributes one half omega k. Okay, remember. So, so now, uh, uh, in, in this case, uh, they, they contribute by minus one half omega k. Okay, it's actually opposite sign. For the for, for the standard harmonic oscillator, in the standard harmonic oscillator, it's one half omega, and the, uh, here is one a uh, minus one half omega. Okay. So so uh, so let me just uh, uh, also saying why we call it. Uh, 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 uh. So a feature of this fermionic harmonic oscillator is that, say, you can act. You can create a state. Yeah, so let me just make some general remarks. Uh, 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 say, say if you have a harmonic oscillator, uh, satisfy, yeah, yeah, let me satisfy this kind of commutation relation. Okay, let's just look at one set of them. Okay, so one set of them. Just take any any set with any choice of k and s, and uh, and then they satisfy that relation. So this defines harmonic harmonic oscillator, okay? And the uh, uh, so interesting feature of this uh, oscillator is that you can only excite them once, because if you have a dagger acting on zero, okay? Now, if you have a dagger square acting on zero, then this is zero. Okay, so, so the only state you have, you only have two states. One is zero, and one is a dagger zero. Okay, it's because the, uh, because the uh, any commutator of a dagger itself is zero, so this just tells you that a dagger square is equal to zero, and also a square is equal to zero. Uh, okay, and, uh, and so, uh, so you act twice. And this is precisely the Pauli principle, and, and the two particles are on the same state, uh, and you get identically zero. Okay, so, so if you act any of k here, a, k, and s, if they are the same, if you act them twice, you get zero. Okay, so if you have two particles in the same state, when k and s is the same, then it means that all their quantum numbers are the same, 
and so the Pauli principle. Uh, so this is the Pauli principle. Okay. okay so this is the Pauli principle. Okay. So no particle, no uh, uh, two particle can be in, in the same state. So, so here, then we conclude. That a dagger, a k s and c k s dagger, they create fermions. Okay. They create particles which obey the Pauli principle. Good. Any questions on this? Good. So now we can define, as before, we can define single particle states. So the single particle states. They are the you just act them once. So again, we define them by with this normalization as in the scalar case, and then a s, a k, a stagger on zero, and then we define k s bar to be the one created by c. Okay. So as before, in the in the in the scalar case, we can interpret this k as the momentum. Okay, you can uh, 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 you can check explicitly as we will describe that the k give you the uh, uh, give you the momentum of the uh, yeah corresponding to the momentum eigenvalue, and then the s can be interpreted as some kind of polarization. Okay, so so uh, um. And uh, um, yeah, so so this we call particle. So we will call this particle, and we will call this antiparticle. Okay. And uh, um, so so each particle has two polarizations. Okay. Since s equal to one two, okay, and they are all satisfy, and the k square, of course, all satisfy uh, minus m square. Okay. Good. Any questions on this? Hmm. It's S and S are different, yeah, because one is created by A and the one is created by C. So, so we just use the bar to distinguish them. Yeah. Yeah, this one goes one into a polarization of this particle, and one bar goes one into the polarization of the antiparticle. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, so you can also find, say you can find the loss of charge, say, say you can find the loss of charge for translation. So we already talked about moment, uh, uh, Hamiltonian. You can also find the loss of charge for spatial translation. And then you just find the P 
PE, capital PE, is equal to, yeah, so this is, yeah, you can just similarly work it out. Actually, in the in your P side, you will work out the uh, the um, the stress tensor. So uh, so you find that the uh, the loss of charge for the spatial translation is given by this, and then if you plug it in, and then you get and then again you have this a dagger. Yeah, to save the effort, I just say you have a dagger a and c dagger c. Okay, so so you can see immediately uh, these two will be uh, uh, eigenstate, say of the momentum operator with uh, uh, with eigenvalue k. Okay, with eigenvalue k. So so that justifies that these are momentum. Okay, uh, uh, and these are the momentum uh, uh, eigenstate. So we can also find we can also define normalization. We uh, we define the normalization. Yeah, uh, uh, for those uh, you can check the normalization uh, 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 for those states. Uh, so these are the plane wave. So you can check just by using commutation relation. And this is given by omega k. Okay. And similarly for the antiparticle. And the same thing. Okay. Same thing. But if you take the overlap between the particle and the antiparticle, you always get zero, okay? Because the commutator between A and C is always zero. Take the take K R and the K prime S bar is always zero, okay? So they're always orthogonal. So let me so let us make some further loads here. So since we have two components, since each particle a fermion, so, so we already said there should be a fermion and has two components. Okay, so we so again we guess there must be spin one half particle. Okay. Okay, we guess there must be spin one half particle. And uh, so you can um, so you can check explicitly. Yeah. So uh, so you can guess that this should be spin one half particle, but you can check explicitly. Indeed, the eigenvalues, uh, uh, so you can construct angular momentum operator because this series is Lorentzian variant, but you can construct the loss of charge associated with the uh, Lorentz transformation, and then you can construct the angular momentum operator, and then you check, uh, and then indeed, so you find indeed the k s and the k bar k s bar has eigenvalue of spin half particles. Okay. So this is you can check explicitly. Okay. Good, any questions on this?
And this will be in your P side, okay. Uh, 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 this is in your P side. And uh, 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 this is uh, um, a little bit non-trivial calculation, uh, but it's an instructive one, okay. So when you see from your hand, uh, see it with your own eye, and from your own calculation, uh, that this is spin one half, uh, 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 it's it satisfying, okay. Good, any questions on this? So more generally, so we will not be able to, uh, we will not uh, 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 certainly prove here. So more generally, you can prove, uh, uh, can prove they exist, the so-called spin statistical theorem. Okay, so uh, half integer spin fields Yeah, so half integer spin okay, fields can be uh, can only be uh, uh, can be quantized using anti commutation relation anti commutators. Okay. Not only spin half, say three half, five half, etc. Okay, so uh, so Dirac is the Dirac field is the uh, uh, the simplest of them, and uh, in the anti commutation relation, and so uh, 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 so obey the this uh, so called Fermi Dirac statistics. Okay, uh, uh, so they obey the Pauli principle. Yes, in statistical physics. Which, when you exchange the wave function, you get the minus sign. Uh, it's called Fermi Dirac statistics. And in contrast, if you have an integer spin, say like a scalar, or like a, a photon, okay, they have integer spin. Uh, uh, a photon have spin one, and then you can uh, quantize them using commutators. Okay. So for integer spin, and then quantized, can be consistently quantized using commutators. So in this case, you get the Bose-Einstein statistics. Okay. Means when you exchange the wave function of the particles, the uh, uh, the wave function remain. Uh, when you exchange the particles, the wave function uh, remains symmetric. Okay. And so this is a very general. Okay, yeah, this is very general. Good. Any questions on yes? Um, yeah, uh, 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 that's a very good question. So in two plus one dimension, very special to two plus one dimension. So there are more general statistics than both Einstein, uh, than bosons and fermions. There are things in between called anions. Yeah. And, uh, and they, uh, they play a very important role in condensed matter physics. Yeah. Yeah. The anion actually was proposed by our colleague, Frank Wilczek in early 80s. And uh, yeah, at the, uh, at the beginning, it sounded like a fantasy, and but the nature actually find many important applications in condensed matter physics. Yeah. Yes. What uh, what we think of our terms as the temperature of A is operating as a particle detection mechanism. Yeah, it, 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 it's it just convention. It doesn't matter. You can you can you can as far as they are anti each other. Good, 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 good. Uh, 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 that's what we are going to talk about. Other questions? Yes. So spin one half field comes from two functional value of s, which comes from like solving the classical graphical 
Yeah, so, so, so spin one half, you can gas it from the two components, but, but this one you can just uh, work out the eigenvalues, you will see it's one half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you will have more components. Yeah, yeah, you will have more components. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Uh, 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 what do you mean? Uh, uh, uh. No, no, we know everything about uh, below. Uh, below uh, everything about them. Once I specify the anti-commutator, uh, then everything is fixed. Then everything is fixed. The spectrum is fixed. The, the energy spectrum just follow from here, right? Uh, so each A or C just can create the one particle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the spectrum is completely fixed. The energy is fixed. Yeah, we know everything about them. Yes. Um, oh yeah, uh, uh, that's a very good question. And so that's the holy grail of uh, uh, neutrino physics and also uh, 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 incandescent matter physics uh, or, or quantum computation. So people have been looking for this Majorana fermions, which we will talk about later. Uh, people have been looking for this Majorana fermions, which they, uh, 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 it's like a real scalar. It's the counterpart of the real scalar here. Here is more like a complex, uh, the counterpart. Of, yeah, here is more like a complex scalar. Uh, but you can actually, uh, we will talk about it, we will be able to define something like a real fermion. And then uh, it's its own antiparticle. Yeah. Yes. Can you write down something that looks like, like analogous to the directory just so you have your five hats? Yeah, yeah, you can write it down. Yeah. Is it five hats? Um, yeah, I think you can write down. Uh, I think people are now, by now, have written down equations for uh, for any. Yeah, in principle, you can write it down for any of them. Yeah, in the end, it bo uh, boils down to group theory. Yeah. Yes. So not to make a tiny question, but the particles that are inside of the, the excitations of the field, will they still obey like the uncertainty relation given that we got rid of the computational relation? So even, even in the... Um, even in the in the boson case, uh, our commutation relation is not related to uh, position and momentum. Right there is the field with its conjugates. Uh, uh, the, uh, 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 there's no position operator anymore. How do you get like a single particle boson from a single particle Yeah, in the non relativistic limit, the, yeah, you have to take a non relativistic limit. Good. Other questions? Yes. In step two, how do we know that all the solutions that we listed out form a complete single multiple? Yeah, be, because we have solved the Dirac equation. Dirac equation is some linear equation. Uh, and the, uh, yeah, you solve it, then you know you have found all the solutions. Yeah, yeah, because we, uh, uh, we do a Fourier transform, convert it into algebraic equation. The algebraic equation we know uh, uh, when we find all the solutions. Yeah, yeah, so those things we can know for full confidence. Good. Okay, so now let's explain in what sense we call one of, uh, call the particle and antiparticle, in what sense they're anti each other, okay? So this is very similar to, to in the boson case when we have a complex scalar. And uh, uh, in the, I remember in the complex scalar case, uh, the reason we call one particle to be particle, the other uh, uh, to be antiparticle, is so they have the same mass, the, the same spin, spin zero in that case, but opposite charge. Okay, so here we can also define a charge for them. Okay, now let's talk about charge. So, um, so remember in your uh, in your P set. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, when we first talk about the Dirac equation, in your piece said that you derived that if you treat the Dirac equation as a wave equation, 
then you can derive a probability current. And then the zeroth component of that current is actually positive definite. Okay, remember? So 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 there when we treat the Dirac equation as a wave equation. And then we find from what we did with Schrodinger equation, similarly from what we did with the Schrodinger equation, and uh, we can uh, we can uh, derive an equation like partial mu, j mu equal to zero, okay, and the j mu. Yeah, so up to a sign, so let me just choose a matter sign here. So J mu is given by this, okay, uh, using our current rotation, okay. Uh, uh, of course, at the time, we don't know the, oh, yeah, uh, uh, did we know the bar? Uh, uh, I forgot, anyway. So uh, uh, so you have this J, uh, you can derive this J, and the zeroth component of the J, you just psi dagger psi, okay, which is manifestly uh, 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 positive as a classical function, okay. And uh, so I mentioned that this was Dirac's main motivation for writing down uh, for writing down Dirac equation is to look for a probability current with the positive uh, 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 probability. Okay, and so this is positive definite classically. Uh, yeah, uh, when you treat it as a wave equation. Okay. So now we are, but now we don't think Dirac equation as a wave equation. We treat it as a field theory. So it's a field theory, and then Dirac equation. So we have the uh, uh, the action. Okay, so this action has an obvious symmetry similar to the complex boson case. So uh, so this uh, you can rotate side by a phase, by a constant phase. Then psi bar goes to minus alpha psi. Okay, and so uh, so obviously this is the invariant. Okay, if alpha is a constant, and so this is a U one symmetry. Okay, so so when you uh, 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 have a symmetry by rotation by a phase, and it's a U one symmetry, and uh, so from the Lossow theorem, then there must be a conserved current. Okay, corresponding to this uh, phase rotation. So, so without any doing any calculation, you should already be able to guess. Okay, you should already be able to guess uh, that this is the current. Okay, so this now become the loss of current. So, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so actually this. Uh, if you find the loss of current, you just find this one. Okay, just find this one. So, so now, instead we interpret J zero rather than interpret the, uh, uh, this as a probability current uh, and this as a probability density. If you treat it as a wave equation, and here we just interpret it as the a conserved current for this U1 symmetry, uh, you have some conserved current, and then this is uh, 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 corresponding to the zeroth component of this conserved current, okay? And so this is, uh, we, we interpret as some kind of charge density. Okay, as we did for the uh, uh, scalar case. Okay, now this is just interpreted as the, um, so, so now, Now you can just work it out. What's the this uh, uh, and then the the Q? So the Q defined this way. So Q is the total conserved charge, which is you integrate J zero over all space. And then just equal to okay. 
So naively, uh, this is a positive definite quantity. OK? But actually, uh, uh, now if you plug in, OK, now if you plug in the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, 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 the explicit expression for psi, the, then what you find is the following. You find the Q have the following form. Now minus CK S dagger CKS and then plus the infinite constant. Okay. Plus the infinite constant. So um yeah, so we will define the Q, the, the quantum operator Q by uh, 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 by forgetting about this infinite constant. Okay. So now you see something very interesting happens. So uh, yeah, uh, 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 so uh, uh, so if we set this constant, yeah, uh, 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 they call this. Let me just call this q zero, and the q zero is infinite. Just as you have a constant energy for the, uh, just you have E0, uh, which is infinite, and here is also infinite. But we will define the, uh, the, the, the quantum version, but we can just define the Q just to uh, uh, include this part. Okay, and then by definition, so if I define the Q just by that part, then Q acting on the vacuum just gives you zero. Okay, because I have C and A on the other side. Okay, so it means that the vacuum have zero charge. Good, but now you see something interesting happens. So do you observe something interesting here? Yes? That's right. Good, good. So, so naively, this quantity is infinitely, uh, uh, naively, this quantity is positively definite. Okay. But if we define it in the way, but this quantity by itself is divergent. Okay, when we say something is uh, 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 positive definite, if it's divergent, then it does not mean very much. Okay. So now when we want to make it finite, the way we make it finite is we define this uh, 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 so that when you act on the vacuum, so that it's zero, okay? So that the vacuum have zero charge. So when we throw away this infinite constant, and then actually this can be either positive or negative. Okay, this can be either positive or negative. And uh, 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 um, yeah, yeah, so this is the magic by throwing away some constant, okay? Uh, throwing away infinite constant. And you can make a positive quantity into, into a, 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 a arbitrary sign. But this is a good thing. So now, if you look at when you act on the uh, uh, um, A and the C, because of this sign difference, because of the sign difference, then you find that when you act on K, S, then you get eigenvalue one. When you act on k s bar, you get eigenvalue minus one. Okay. So so this has charge one. So this has charge minus one. Okay. So you see that this particle and the particle, everything else is the same. They have the same mass. They have the same spin, spin half. But they only differ charge uh, by, uh, by opposite charge. So, so that's why we call one of them is particle and one of them antiparticle. Okay. Yes? Is this true because of the probability charge? 
No, 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 this is not probability, this is just charge. Uh, 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 there's no probability interpretation anymore. Probability is only in the, uh, when you treat it as a wave function, uh, a wave equation. Uh, but we don't treat it as a wave equation, we treat it as a field theory. So in the field theory, and, uh, and, uh, and this is just some charge uh, uh, particles can carry. Yeah, it yeah, have nothing to do with probability. Yes? Um, what do you mean by, um... Oh, so just like, uh, like right there, do you, do you not go to the vertices of positive energy? Yeah. yeah. Does it break, like, like, like particles and antiparticles are not quite the same? Yeah, it, it, you always have to, uh, you always speak, because you have to choose a reference, because the particle and antiparticle, they create something out of the vacuum. Still, uh, uh, it, it, even if you keep this Q0, so that means that your vacuum has a charge, which is Q0. And again, then the, uh, then the particle will increase the charge by one, and the antiparticle will decrease the charge by one. Yeah, so this aspect is the same. Yeah, so, so, so when you act uh, th this on the vacuum, it just increases charge. Yeah, just here for convenience, we choose the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the vacuum to have zero charge. Good. Any other questions? Yes. Does this charge have a physical dissipation, or how do I interpret the charge in this presentation? Yeah, so one is the electron, one is the positron. Yeah, so these are the electric charge we will, uh, we, uh, we observe, uh, 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 yeah. So this is the electric, uh, so when you apply this theory to the electron, then this is the, just the, uh, the charge of the electron. Okay. <clears throat> So yeah, so uh, so this is actually my next remark. So uh, applied to electron. So um, the Q can be interpreted up to a sign, okay, as the charge, as the electric charge. Yeah, up to a sign and, and a unit. Uh, so this is essentially the electric charge. Okay. So we will see later, uh, 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 this is the charge which uh, coupled to the electromagnetism. Okay, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the concept of charge is independent of the force. Yeah, even though sometimes the force, you use this concept of the charge, but charge by itself is an independent concept. Yeah, yeah, when we talk about the Dirac, uh, when we talk about the Maxwell theory, and uh, then couple uh, this thing to the Maxwell theory, and then it be, uh, will become clearer. Yeah, but, uh, but the bottom line is that the charge by itself, yeah, uh, uh, you can define independent of the force. It's just some quantum number, yeah. Yes? That's right, yeah, so yeah, indeed. So here there's a unit, okay, uh, uh, because uh, 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 you can multiply that J by arbitrary constant, and then what, uh, uh, that defines your unit for your charge. And so, so in principle, yeah, yeah, so that unit have to be determined by experiments. Good. So, um, so the Dirac equation, so, so very important, is that Dirac, Dirac theory okay, predicts, if you say this is a theory of electron, so predict that the electron has an antiparticle. We call it E plus, okay? So the E plus have the same mass, spin, but just opposite charge from the electron, okay? 
And of course, when Dirac wrote down this theory, uh, there was no E plus yet. People only know electron. Okay. Even though Dirac had all uh, the wrong motivation to write down this theory, uh, try to treat it as a wave equation, etc., but he correctly predicted somehow electron uh, uh, has uh, 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 this theory predict a lot of positive charge particle. Okay, and uh, so that was in 1930. That was in 19. I think when he did that was uh, uh, first wrote this down. Maybe it was 1929 or 1930. So at that time, you predict a new particle that was considered to be crazy. Okay, and 20 years later, people uh, 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 try to predict one particle a day. Okay, <laughs> uh, become a fashion. But but in 1929, 1930, to predict existence of new particle, people just absolutely crazy. So so. Um, So yeah, I will not explain uh, how he predicts this particle. Anyway, uh, uh, he tried to understand these wave equations and then predict there must be some antiparticle. Okay. But at the, at the beginning, he was a little bit afraid. Okay, he was worried people will just call him uh, out uh, 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 crazy. Okay, so he said this particle maybe is proton. <laughs> <laughs> Say oh, be, because people knew proton at the time. Oh, he said maybe this particle is proton. But of course, he should knew immediately himself that the proton does not have the same mass as electron. <laughs> okay, so this cannot be proton. So, and then he quickly gave up that idea and he said, oh, maybe this is a new particle. Okay, maybe this is a new particle. And uh, so, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, but luckily, Luckily, uh, so, so in 1931, he changed his mind. He said, this is a new particle. Okay. So luckily, uh, in just in 1932, and the Anderson discovered it in cosmic string. Oh, no, 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 in cosmic rays. Okay. And, then, uh, and then they found uh, this new particle, which have exactly the same mass as electron, but of the charge in cosmic ray. Okay. Uh, so, so that became a very happy story. Okay. Uh, it became a very happy story. So any questions on this? Yes? Um, yeah, so, so uh, it, 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 indeed, when he first wrote it down, he did, because he treated that as a wave equation. So wave equation, wave function is complex. So he actually just treated that as complex. He didn't even try to uh, make it to be real. Uh, it's just very likely for him to be complex. Yeah, and then, and then, yeah. It turns out if you want to write the uh, real equation, uh, 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 require a little bit more effort, uh, more effort, which we will describe, I think, maybe next lecture. Yeah, uh, you, uh, you can get the real uh, version of it. Other questions? But that takes a little bit more effort. Yeah, and then we'll wait until Majorana, uh, uh who discovered it. Yeah. Yes? So, what was the framework on specifically charging a wave length particle? So, you're saying it has to be charged wave length, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Is there a version that you could accommodate a charged wave length and then have some energetic division between the wave length? Yeah, yeah. Uh, charge is spin one half. That is the Majorana fermion, which we will talk about uh, maybe next lecture. Yeah. yeah. But I guess so. Next build out of this framework, or is it? Yeah, it's built from this framework, but uh, 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 but with a little bit more elaboration. With a little bit more elaboration. Okay. Other questions? Good. So so now let's. Um, so after talk about this condensation, now we can talk about correlation functions of the uh, 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 this Dirac field.
Okay, so, so let's first look at the, say, the Whiteman function, uh, uh, which you just don't do any time ordering. So let's look at this object, I call d plus alpha beta, which is defined, again, due to the time translation symmetry, we only depend on the Okay, let's look at this object, okay? Um, yeah, you can also exchange them, then uh, that's called the D-minus, uh, so it doesn't matter, okay? And uh, so, um, yeah, so let's look at this object. So, uh, so this is a two-point correlation function between these two uh, fermionic fields. And then you can just plug in the, uh, uh, the expansion for each of them, okay? Then you just work it out as we did before. For the uh, uh, for the boson, and so let me just outline one step, one intermediate step. So when you plug them in, then you find something like this, and then you find this sum over s equal to one two, and then you find u s alpha and u s beta bar, and exponential i k x minus y, okay? So now do you recognize this object? Anybody recognize it? So this is the object we discussed last lecture, but even though, yeah, but, uh, 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 so this is the projector to the positive, uh, to the space of the positive energy solutions. To, uh, so this is the projector to the space of the U solutions. Okay, so it appears here. So, so, so uh, and I, uh, uh, I mentioned that this actually, uh, 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 you can work it out. So, so this is given by this form, okay? And then, yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah. So, uh, so try to check it in your in your notes of last week. Okay. Uh, 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 a Monday. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so now if you plug this in, and then you get d three x d three k. I i k slash plus m. So this is a matrix, and you take alpha beta component. And then expansion i k x minus y. So now, so remember the free trans. Uh, uh, remember in free transform any factor k in the integrand, you can take it out in terms of a differential operator. So we can actually rewrite this as i, take this i out, and replace this by partial slash, but with derivative on x plus m alpha beta d3k two pi. Okay. So you can just take this outside of this Fourier transform and then uh, uh, replace k slash by, uh, by partial derivative on x. Okay, when you take the derivative on x, you bring down a factor of k. Yeah, bring down a factor of i k. Okay, so i k uh, can be replaced by partial x. But now if you recognize this guy, so, so do you recognize this guy? Yes? What is this? Yeah, exactly. This is the Weitzman function for uh, for scalar field. So, so now we can just write it as i partial x slash plus m alpha beta and g plus x minus y. And so this is the um, so g plus x minus y say is the zero by x phi dagger y of a scalar field, okay. 
say, uh, 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 of a complex scalar. So we see that actually there's a very nice relation between the complex scalar uh, uh, Weitzman function and the uh, 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 the fermionic ones. Okay, uh, there's a very, uh, a very nice relation between them. So, so they just differ by this factor. Okay, differ by this factor. So similarly, you can work out other comp uh, uh, other kind of correlation function. So uh, uh, let me just r write down the result for the others. So you can also define d minus alpha beta x minus y to be, so you just exchange the order between them. So in general, they don't commute, okay? So beta y so alpha x zero. And then you find, in this case, you find it given by minus i partial x smash plus m alpha beta and the g minus uh, 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 x minus y. Okay, the g minus again is defined uh, as for the scalar field, you put, uh, you exchange these two, okay. And for the retarded, you can define the dr alpha beta to be theta so x zero minus y zero. And now you define retarded using the anti-commutator rather than the commutator we used before. So for, uh, when we define uh, retarded for the uh, sca uh, for scalar, we used the commutator, but now you use anti-commutator. Okay? And then now you find that this is given by, again, I partial x plus m, the corresponding retarded scalar two-point function. Okay. So finally, we can also define the time ordered. So finally, we can also define the time ordered Feynman function. So define to be df alpha beta. So this is defined to be time ordered. Psi alpha x psi beta bar y zero. So now this time ordering is defined as the following. So again, everything for fermionic fields, you replace commutator by anti-commutator, you replace commutation by anti uh, 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 by anti commute so, 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 so remember previously when you change the order, so if the x0 is greater than y0, and then you just maintain this order, so you just have zero psi alpha x psi bar beta y zero. But now when you when y zero become greater than x zero, you exchange the order between them. But now you add the actual minus sign, okay, for fermion. So for boson, you would just have this, but now with fermion, you add a, a additional minus sign. Okay, then you can show that this is the same as, again, just plus m alpha beta, the scalar gf. So now we can go to, um, so if you want to do Feynman diagrams, et cetera, as we 
discussed before, you, we often need the momentum space expression. So if we go to momentum space, essentially just to a Fourier transform of x minus y, okay, so this is the function of x minus y, to a Fourier transform x minus phi, and then you will get df, k. So now I will suppress this alpha beta indices, and now you treat this as a matrix, okay? I treat this as a matrix in the spinner space. And so, so you can just free transform this guy. So this is easy, we know how, to do, uh, how this free transform, and this just give us some factor of k, okay? So, so we essentially just get i, i k slash plus m, okay? So, so I, partial x slash just become i k slash. And then, and then we just uh, uh, plug in the, the, uh, uh, the expression for, for scalar propagator, just given by this. Okay, so, so this is a C number. This is a matrix. Okay, this is a matrix. And now if you remember, again, this formula that I k, uh, we, the, we discussed last time, I k slash m, I k slash minus m, equal to minus k square, k slash minus m square, equal to, say, minus k square, minus m square, okay? And so, so essentially, you see that k squared plus m squared is essentially the product of these two. Uh, so this is two matrix product. And the right-hand side is identity matrix, OK? So it, 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 it's this number times identity matrix. And, and so this becomes, essentially, you should view this as times identity matrix. And you see that essentially, uh, these two optical constants, these two are inverse matrix of each other. Okay, so we can actually rewrite this as just inverse of uh, this matrix, minus i k slash plus m minus epsilon. Okay. okay. So, so this i k slash minus m is the inverse matrix of this. And uh, and so uh, 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 yeah yeah uh, 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 just this this equation you find that okay good so so now we conclude that the momentum space a key expression okay he said this is one so let me just write this in very prominent position, but this will be used over and over, okay? So this is a matrix, and, uh, and given by that, okay? Any questions? Yes? Um, oh, you mean, when the uh, when the uh, Dirac equation acting on it, you get some delta function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Other questions? So it's not the same epsilon, right? Hmm? Epsilon is really different, isn't it? No, uh, uh, epsilon is the same. It's similar. It's just it's the m minus i epsilon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's yeah. It's just always m. Yeah, whether it's m squared minus epsilon or m uh, minus epsilon, it's the same. Yeah. Okay, just become, uh, yeah, yeah, here uh, you only have one factor of m. Good. Okay, so, so let's conclude our discussion of the quantization of the, um, of the uh, uh, Dirac theory. And now we go to the next topic, which you have already uh, asked several times, but we only have a couple of minutes to, to
to motivate it and to discuss it. So, so the four is power of fermions. So um, yeah, so we will have a lot of time to really uh, start discussing, and let me just say a few uh, remarks. So so we we derived before that the uh, uh, Dirac spinner. So so far, what we discussed normally is called Dirac spinner. So they transform on the Lorentz transformation in the way so that the um, uh, Dirac equation is covariant. So it's a natural question, to, and, the, and the Dirac spinner have eight components. So have eight real components. You have four complex components. So altogether, there are eight uh, uh, variables. Okay. So it's a natural to ask whether you can reduce uh, the Dirac spinner into a smaller set. Okay. So so you have uh, instead you have eight independent variables into a smaller set. That still can give rise, uh, uh, still can give rise to a Dirac equation, which transform covariantly uh, 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 under the uh, 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 under Lorentz transformation. Okay, and uh, so so the answer is yes. So there are two ways of doing it, and one is called the chiral fermions, and the other is called the Majorana fermions, and the chi uh, chiral fermions is like to have two component complex, uh, uh, to have two component complex uh, a vector. So altogether, you have four comp four real components. Or you have so-called Majorana fermions, which you have four real uh, components. Okay, four real components. Yeah. So we will discuss that uh, 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 next time. Okay. Good. Good. That's all for today. <laughs>